welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is child sexual abuse and domestic violence. And we're happy to have with us two directors to talk about uh, these as two very, very important issues uh, this morning. Uh, Ms. DeLois Butler. Uh, Ms. Butler is the director of the Children's Youth and Family Division at the Lord Elam Mental Health Center at Meharry Medical College. And Ms. Susan Cannon is the director of PEACE, P-E-A-C-E, -E, in Nashville. And let me welcome both of you ladies to uh, the show this morning. Thank you. Uh, before we get started with uh, the areas that the two of you would like to uh, deal with, uh, let's talk about uh, the two of you and say something about your background and your education. Now, some of the things that perhaps led you, Ms. Butler, to uh, the position that you're in now. And after that, uh, Ms. Cannon, some of the things that led you to the directorship of the organization. Let's start with you, Ms. Butler. Okay. Well, I uh, obtained a master's degree from the University of Tennessee in Knoxville um, in social work. And while there in that community, I did uh, some volunteer work and really did a field place with the Department of Human Services. And so after I completed uh, my school assignments, I was hired with the Department of Human Services. And I guess my first job assignment, I can still remember, uh, it dealt with a, a family where there was some abuse uh, involved and it was an African-American family. And I guess and from that time, I, I, I worked in investigation for the Department of Human Services for uh, uh, six years. And I really dealt with uh, child sex abuse, leaving Department of Human Services, going over to Meharry, to the Mental Health Center. I went to work in a child sex abuse project. They had just received a, a new grant just to work on this issue. And from that, and I've been there for, for 10 years now, and I've been directing this children's program for eight years. Um, so I've got 16 years of experience of working in this field in particular. I work with the victims as well as people who victimize children. Very good. And so you're going to give us all of that information this uh, morning in terms of that experience. Yes, I will try to. The same thing will be true with you, uh, Ms. Cannon. Why don't you give us uh, the same kind of overview in terms of sure. your involvement with peace? Um, I have an undergraduate degree in social work and a master's in ethics from Vanderbilt Divinity School. And um, 10 years ago, I began working after my master's degree here in Davidson County and working in the area of social services. I'm, I'm not ordained, uh, having, even though I've had a divinity school education, but have been really drawn to work with offender populations. And for uh, five or six years, I worked with those individuals who either were going into prison or coming out of prison. And for the last five years, I've worked with the offender population of, of those perpetrators of domestic violence, as well as working with the victims in our agency. So, And so, so. both of you bring uh, to the show a wealth of information dealing with these two very, very important subjects. And what we'd like to do today is to talk about these two subjects, but to try to show the relationship between the two of the uh, areas. And, uh, and we wish to do that by uh, having you, uh, first Ms. Butler, to give us some information about an overview of child sexual abuse in this country. And for you, Ms. Cannon, to listen to what she has to say about that and to apply the kind of information that you have dealing with domestic violence to uh, the things that she's given us. And then we'll do the same thing uh, with uh, you and domestic violence. We want to do that to, to show the relationship between these two. First of all, Ms. Butler. Okay. I guess the uh, child sex abuse is on the rise as far as reporting. We don't think that it's on the rise as far as incidents. But because there's so much information out now, there's a lot being talked about, a lot of programs such as this, uh, more people are aware of there are places that you can get help. I don't have to just sit and be silent and talk about it. So uh, for that reason, for one, that's one reason in a way that it's, it's a lot being reported and it's a lot for people to deal with now in the mental health uh, field as well as the field of investigating in the criminal justice field and so forth. Um, and there are children that get a lot of information in school also. So it's a big problem in this country as well as this state and this city. We have a problem. Now, when you talk about that, who are you talking about? Uh, certainly we know you're talking about children. But uh, when you talk about those who are abused and the abusers and et cetera within that framework, what, who are you talking about? We're talking about children from the age of three months on up to 18 years old. and. It has nothing to do with uh, racial lines, with uh, economic lines. It cuts across all those things. There's nothing in particular. There's nothing that says 
If you're this race, you're going to be sexually abused. If you're this race, you're this, this economic. Uh, we have people who are professional people who are abusing their children, lawyers. I've worked with uh, people who have who doctors, and it doesn't matter who it is. Uh, can't abuse their children. It's kind of domestic violence, and, and, and I think she's already indicated some of the characteristics of some of the things that you're going to tell us, but go speak to that. Certainly the, the, the case, it's the case that uh, with regard to the problem of domestic violence, it cuts across all racial, economic, religious lines completely. I mean, that is, that is really a fact that we know. Um, Domestic violence is just now sort of coming out of the closet. It's only been within the last five to ten years that throughout the United States the court system has taken this problem seriously. That, it is, that is, it is now truly regarded as an offense, a crime to be violent in your home, whereas previously it was not. It was sort of viewed as what happens in one's home is their private business. That's a private matter, not a public matter. And so I think that, that the whole issue of, of victims coming forward to get the help they need through the criminal justice system has been proven as that system begins to take this issue much more seriously. Now, is there a pattern when you talk about both of these issues? And let's talk about patterns. I think we've indicated that certainly all of these things, be it domestic violence or child sexual abuse, simply cut across economic and class lines. But now, there has to be a pattern in terms of uh, what we're dealing with here. And let's talk about some of the things that you identify within that pattern in child sexual abuse and in domestic violence. Well, we talk about patterns, I guess. We know that everyone does not sexually abuse their children. We say that everyone might have the propensity to do that, but they don't do it. So it has to be certain stresses in a person's life, and it might be something that's internal in that person that would cause them to, you know, under certain circumstances, uh, touch their own children or stepchildren, or they might be a sibling. We've got uh, adolescents now having to do that. Uh, statistically, it says probably about 50% of the men who sexually abused their children were probably abused um, as children themselves. It might be a little higher depending on, on where you are in the country, uh, where that happens. And in my work, and I work with, uh, with men who offend children also, I've been doing a group uh, for eight years now, uh, and it says about 50 percent of them were sexually abused themselves. And there's some impulse control problems going on with that person also. Uh, it's a power issue going on. Also, so there's a, a lot of things that you can see that, that leads up to it, but it doesn't come to anyone's attention until something actually happens. Mm -hmm. So there's a need to, to, to do a lot of preventive work and to kind of know what some things to look for. So people have to kind of know for themselves, you know, I might be running into some problems here if I'm having this or this is happening to me and this type of thing. Well, what are some of the power, you mentioned some of the power issues and uh, some of the things that you're dealing with, uh, and all of those things that you're saying is good, those things are good, but uh, some of the things that you're alluding to, you're not, uh, you're not telling us uh, well. here. Uh, Ms. Butler, <laughs> which is to say, when we say that there, okay. uh, there's a power issue involved, what, are we saying that the, there's an issue between the child and the uh, person who was okay. abused? The person might have lost control outside of the home in other places. Say they might have lost a job or something, or, or there's some power being taken away in some other situation. It might be, uh, some societal pressures that's going on. And, but a person can feel that they're in control of their own home. A lot of men who abuse their children won't even go outside their home and deal with the prostitute or, or deal with someone else. They, don't, they have a lot of uh, some ethical things that's going on. So um, it's just losing control in one area and trying to gain control in another area. It's one problem that, that we see with this. Uh, it could be arousal type of pattern, that there has been a problem with their arousal patterns, where there's some deviant arousal behaviors going on that they can't control, or maybe not even know it until it gets out of hand. Sometimes it's, uh, it's some gradual things where uh, pornography plays a big role in this. They've been viewing pornography, have really gotten into um, maybe some, some peeping, uh, maybe seeing children undress uh, inappropriately and, and not knowing that this, is, this, is, this has been a problem for me until they actually first church a child. Also seeing that when we get uh, men in their 20s and 30s, uh, they might have gotten charged with, with it. Once they get into a program, into treatment, they say, well, when was the first time you, know, you had those thoughts or the first time you touched a child? It usually starts at adolescence. Uh, so we know that now that 